Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Java video. In this video, we're going to be talking about chaos engineering and we're going to be using ToxyProxy Java client. So we're going to be able to do some chaos with ToxyProxy. I personally like chaos engineering a lot. I believe, especially nowadays when you're using cloud computing a lot, uh, failure happens all the time and it will happen. You need to be able to know if you're application and your infrastructure are going to be resilient. And um, this is uh, especially important for applications and microservices because um, it's all about network calls and, uh, you know, they could hang, they could be down, they could have latency and ToxyProxy can help us in these uh, scenarios and we can see if the app can at least recover or not choke or not be in a weird state that you need to restart the whole machine, right? So, before I go to the code, um, you need to get ToxyProxy in your machine. Uh, ToxyProxy is a Go application, so either uh, you can get the Go binary and just run, there's a server and a client, and the client you can either, either use by CLI or we can use by Java. Um, so um, in the case you want to download the Go binary, you're going to have a binary like for, it, for Linux, like this one, ToxyProxy server, and then you just want to run that. Uh, I have it here in my machine, so I can just say toxy, sorry, uh, toxy proxy server, and then you just run that, and that's it, toxy proxy is running, and the client is going to be used to configure uh, the server, so I'm going to stop this, so that's the goal uh, binary with self-contained, which is nice. So, once you run that, you can add rules, right, so actually... Uh, let's uh, run uh, that Go program uh, one more time because we just want to uh, demo the CLI for you guys. So let's say we want to create some chaos in Lattice. Lattice is a Java driver for uh, Redis. And let's say we want to test out if Lattice is good enough, right? Um, so there's another binary, uh, which is another Go, Go application called ToxyProxy CLI. Uh, and then first thing you want to do is to create um, a, a proxy, right? And um, so here on the left, right, this is the port that my application uh, gonna connect, and this is the real uh, connection. In this way, it's literally a real proxy, right? And if you don't add any shenanigans, it actually gonna go just pass through to Redis and will will work, right? So uh, that's the default Redis part where Redis is running. I have Redis CLI here, it's exactly that, right? You can see uh, it's uh, fully um, working. I have I can set uh, values here. I can get keys and uh, it's all good. And as you can see here, there's this uh, on localhost sixty three seventy nine. That's the standard Redis part. So with this, right, we can create uh, a proxy and it's just gonna fall through. We can also test that proxy with Redis. Um, if we took a look here um, this way, right, and I can do minus p to pass a port, right, and then we are proxying and I can do get x, x, get 11. So now I'm accessing Redis um, CLI using toxic proxy and going through there, right? But so far we didn't inject any chaos, so everything gonna be fine. Um, but now let's create some interesting stuff, right? So there's a bunch of uh, different uh, capabilities, but let's uh, just play with latency for now. So basically, I want to add a rule that for each operation, um, there is some latency. Um, so what you do, you use the client, you you, you define what sort of endpoint you're going to use. There's multiple endpoints in ToxyProxy, and I want to use uh, the latency one. So we say Toxy add latency. Then you define uh, how much latency do you want. I want one second. And you need to um, name what proxy do you want to attach this rule. So before, uh, here, the last name, I, I named my proxy as Redis. And the reason why you do that is because you can um, create multiple proxies here. So basically I'm saying that I'm adding a rule that for each operation now gonna take one second, right? So I'm gonna run and that's it, the rule is done. Now, if I go back to Redis, um, let me do something here. So that's, uh, you see that <laughs> to connect took some time, right? But let me put the, the full port uh, 
6379. Look at the difference. It connects right away because we're going straight to Redis, right? But if I go to Toxiprox, you're going to see that take some time. And when I do operations, you're going to see it also takes some time, right? That's our latency. And then we can see that one second there. And that's for all uh, sort of operations, right? If I run here, you're also going to see that that takes a second. If I run here, again, it takes a second, right? But uh, if I go back to Redis, um, you see it's right away. It doesn't even bother tell me how long it took because it was pretty fast, right? So actually, you can see that Toxy Proxy is working. But what I want to show is you can do that with Java. And that's where it gets more interesting because you can create sort of a JUnit. And then you can create a proper uh, chaos experiment where you can set up the environment. You can assume some sort of... Uh, uh, assumptions and then you can perform some chaos then you can recover from that chaos and then you can get some expectations right that's often how you do uh, chaos engineering okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna shoot down this right um and what i want to show is that there's um there's other ways uh we can run um we can run uh the toxic product we can also use docker I think I have a script here, uh, I do, it's called run toxy proxy, uh, and this is a simple docker, uh, but basically it wraps the Go uh, binary, all right, so you can run as a container. So let me do that, all right, so I'm going to do here run, and then we are running toxy proxy, it's the same Go, but now it's a docker, right, docker container, so the docker ps, you can see my container is running there. Awesome. Uh, now, um, if you remember that uh, client I was using, let's use the Java client because that will give us more powerful uh, to create uh, chaos, right? And it will be more fun. So let me open the Java app. So first of all, let's talk about uh, dependencies, right? And um, of course, um, you need to have the dependency for the Toxy proxy. Uh, that's the Java um client right if you want you could be using docker or could be using the go client or whatever there's other clients for other languages um and here i have a dependence for lattice because uh, that's the java client i want to test and junit although i have junit and log4j i'm not really using that i'm more like in a main app but it, it could be in junit ideally it is now let's look what i have here right i have some interesting stuff here so the first thing you want to do uh, is to set up the proxy, right? If you remember the, on the CLI, we're creating uh, a proxy. So that's what we're going to do. I create a method called setup chaos. And then we're going to create a toxic proxy client. When you run the default port is 8474. Um, if we look here, we have our uh, dot container and it exactly says 8474. Uh, we could even uh, go one step further to double check um, docker ps. And then uh, here, if we get this uh, docker inspect, and then um, we're gonna be able to see information. And there we go here, All right? We can see that is action 8474. Great. Um, so going back here, so we create a toxic proxy client, and then after that, we can create proxies. So we're gonna create a Redis proxy, and I do create proxy, I name the proxy, I tell what is the host and port I want to proxy it, and what's the default uh, upstream call I want to do it, right? And um, then I can start adding rules. And here, uh, I can do toxics, I can delete rules, and uh, you know I can get upstream, I can enable disable the proxy, which is also another uh, form of chaos. But on, on the toxic, you know, you can uh, change the bandwidth. You can make, you can simulate a slower bandwidth, which can be useful for mobile or for um, BFFs, backends for front frontends. Um, you can uh, add latency. You can limit data. You can, you know, sort of a slow close, timeout. So you can do some sort of chaos. But let's continue for the latency. And then you name the rule. I'm calling one second latency toxi, and then uh, the direction you want to go. You can either go downstream or upstream, right? And remember, upstream is the real um, Redis uh, connection. Then you tell how much latency you want. If you want any jitter, I don't want a jitter. 
and then I just just put things on message and return in the reds proxy, right? So we we create a proxy. With that proxy, now we need to actually connect to Freddy's. So then we're gonna do lattice code to connect to Freddy's. So here I'm gonna uh, use my port for the toxic proxy, and I'm gonna create a Redis client. I'm not using Sentinel or uh, any fancy Redis client, uh, Redis clusters out out there. So it's a standard instance connection. That's why this is fine. Um, and then here we connect. That's always standard lattice code. I won't get sync operations. Because explicitly I want to show the, the latency happening, right? If it's async, you might not see it. Um, and then I just print out that I connect to latency, right? So here, if you go back to my main, what's going on is, okay, we create a proxy, we create rules, and we connect to Redis. Now, we're going to run some code forever, uh, and we're going to have a control variable. And then what we're going to do is this. Okay, so first we're going to set... Uh, issue a set command to Redis uh, with the key call K1, and we're going to put the current date. And also we're going to do a get here. And then we're going to print both, get and set. If toxic proxy was not uh, adding latency, this will be pretty fast. But because it's adding latency, this will take two seconds to run, because it's going to be one, one second here to connect, but that's out of the while loop. But as we are on the while loop, there's going to be one second here and one second here. So it'll be two seconds latency. Um, and then I'm going to increment my control variable i. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to keep the calls forever. I'm going to keep the calls, uh, the chaos for 10 calls. After 10 calls, I'm going to remove the chaos. So I have this uh, cleanup chaos here where I basically call delete on the proxy. So I'm completely deleting that proxy and then I'm proxying again. And the reason why I'm proxying again is because I am removing uh, that rule and starting my clean slate because my application now is trying to connect on this part here, right? And I want to maintain that. I just don't want to add any chaos. And by doing that, I have the proxy, but I don't have chaos, right? So it's, um, it's exactly what we want. And then after that, uh, the application is going to be super fast, right? Because then this will take milliseconds each case and then going to run pretty fast. But the, I'm going to keep counting and when it's 100, I'm going to end the app, right? So it's only going to execute 100 times. Um, and that's what I got, right? So we can run this application. There we go. Set up ready, set the toxic proxy, connected. And now you're going to see that it's pretty slow and it's going to be pretty slow for a while. And when we reach the threshold, you're going to be lightning fast and then going to be end because we're going to be removing uh, the chaos. So far, the chaos is on and uh, we can see that it's pretty slow. There you go. You see it was really fast. So uh, until uh, 10 was really fast and after that was uh, was really slow. And then after, you know, 10, uh, it's 9, but it's 10 because it started on 0, right? So it's 10. Um, then the, the, the toxic proxy was cleaning up. And then, and if you look here um, on the timestamps, we can see that it was exactly two seconds, right? On each request because we do gets and do sets. But after that, we can see in the same second uh, how many requests we were able to do, right? Pretty much all... Um, all the uh, 90 uh, requests was uh, on the same second, so pretty fast, right? So with that, uh, we can see the power of a toxic proxy and we, how we can create some chaos for microservices and uh, Java libraries. So, or even for other languages, if you prefer, like I said, you know, you can use it in Go and Ruby and other languages, right? So that's it for today. I hope you guys like it. See you next time. Take care. Cheers.